Hello everybody, welcome to my channel where I talk about whatever I feel like and tonight I feel like talking about riots. Are they engineered? Are they allowed? It's debatable, but we've certainly seen our share, especially this year. Um, I, for one, don't think that this is all necessary. I think that a lot of it, um, you know, conspiratorially speaking, may have been staged. I've seen videos of policemen setting their own cars on fire. I've seen piles of bricks conveniently placed, unbolted um, benches, just way too convenient. And it's very, very easy to excite a riot, okay? And, and racial rioting is the most common, well-used, easily triggered subject. I think we can all agree on those points, right? Well, what if they used active denial? Now, Forbes here says, I'm... The request for the active denial system from the lead military officer, blah, 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 uh, came to nothing. Uh, the several failed attempts to use the technology developed by the Pentagon almost 20 years ago. It's certainly effective. The problem is that it's too scary to use. Okay, 20 years ago. Active denial tech was developed to solve the fundamental problem with crowd control weapons. Those that are effective are not safe. Those that are safe are not effective. The challenge was to build a device capable of dispersing a crowd at long range further than a rock or Molotov cocktail could be thrown without harming anyone. Great idea, right? The solution unveiled in 2001 was a device like a giant satellite dish firing a beam of short wavelength microwaves six feet across. Unlike a microwave oven, these wavelengths only heat the outer surface, penetrating skin to a depth of about 1 64th of an inch. Crucially, this is deep enough to affect pain receptors and trigger the same reflex re reaction that causes you to drop an overhot coffee cup, but without causing burns. It showed that nobody, however tough, can withstand the beam for more than a few seconds. Everyone leaps away to escape it by reflex, known as the repel effect. It has an effective range of several hundred meters and can be aimed as easily as a searchlight. Now, folks, this is not... A conspiracy this is not an idea this is not something I believe is real the tech is real it's 20 years old as far as they're telling us and it is built in use but who knows who knows where it's used who knows how it's used who knows how much they have refined this system in 20 years Tests show that although it may feel like briefly being like on fire, the beam is essentially harmless. The worst injuries recorded were pea-sized blisters when the system was used at the wrong setting. Technically, these are second-degree burns, unpleasant but not lasting harm. This is very different to having an eye destroyed by a rubber bullet. Okay, it's safer than a rubber bullet. All right, um, I've heard of a neurosurgeon from Canada who was sure he was being hit by a microwave weapon who um, gathered evidence as so much as a, a lasting imprint that was left on a glass window. Um, not long ago, there was an Ohio man, and I was in a chat, um, I believe it was a live chat on Marfugal News, and Vlad Groots had caught the article, as a matter of fact, and he reported, and I listened to the police report, the reporter said an Ohio man called 911 said, saying that he was being... Um, hurt by an invisible microwave frequency weapon. Well, 10 minutes later, not even 10 minutes, the whole story out on the wire, and the only thing that you could hear was that um, they were evacuating the, the area because there was a threat of the man having some kind of nuclear uh, gadget in his garage, and they were evacuating everybody. So it turned into, um, I think at the end they said he was playing with a capacitor in his garage and it was dangerous, you know, PCBs or whatever's in it, and he was mentally evaluated. Well, you know, we don't hear reports of this too often because who wants to call and say they're being tortured by an invisible weapon? The answer is nobody, because you do get your butt locked up. You know, these systems are real. Okay, look at these pictures.
Now, for those of you who think those um, LED street lamps with all that equipment in them can't be used for anything nefarious, well, think about this. What if that equipment is being used inside those lamps? All right, that's just, that's just one thing. Okay, these things are, have become very small. They can be put anywhere. They don't need this huge truck anymore. Okay, they have this portable now. Police test a new pain gun, active denial system. Yeah, what would you think? All right, a real life ray gun, once reserved for the military, only could be in the hands of local police soon. Anthony has, why this is both awesome and potentially scary. Handheld version of the military pain ray being developed. According to the recent article, a new science scientist, defense contractor Raytheon, is working on developing a portable reduced range version of the crowd dispersal military tech known as active denial. Police could soon get their hands on the U.S. military's pain ray. The military has a non-lethal non toy straight out of dystopian science fiction. The active denial system, the Pentagon's less lethal microwave-based crowd control weapon, produces potentially harmful hotspots when used in built-up areas, and its effects can be intensified by sweat, sweaty skin. It, it, oh boy, Raytheon's pain gun gets deployed in Afghanistan. It's been six long years since we first got wind of the Pentagon's active denial system and four since it was slated to control riots in Iraq. But though we've seen re reporters zapped by the device once or twice, it seems the Air Force approved pain gun is na only now entering service in Afghanistan. Um, let's just look up the, the video of the truck being used. Okay, uh, let's go to videos. Just bear with me here for a moment. I've seen it about a hundred times, but for those of you who have not seen this video of the active denial system, the pain ray, as it's called, let's watch the video. About it. While this is loading, I'll read a little bit more. Technically, there's little doubt that... Where'd it go? Okay. The Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Director, now the Joint Intermediate Force Capabilities Office, fancy name, so has tested active denial some 12,000 times in every imaginable situation. They've tested against people with pacemakers and contact lenses, people in cars and on boats, people trying to protect themselves with wet t-shirts, tinfoil and concrete blocks, even some brave volunteers under the influence of carefully measured doses of alcohol. One of the more imaginative exercises was practically a game show setup with subjects attempting to cross a series of obstacles while being zapped. The makers, Raytheon, also built a miniature active denial system which they took to trade shows so potential customers could experience the painful but harmless repel effect for themselves. Technically, it's, there is little doubt that the active denial system works as described. Operationally, though, the current version has a couple of drawbacks. Uh, the giant blah blah blah. All right, so... We have established, here is the video, that this is an actual tool. It's built by Raytheon, who, by the way, has a portable version of this called the Ravenclaw. We'll get there. It's very hard to find the pictures anymore, but let's watch non-lethal weapon active denial system in use. Of course, error timeout. Marines and several other DOD representatives had quite the heated demonstration at Quantico, Virginia, from the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate. This is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. I say again, this is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. Their new active denial system boasts a re... I'm not sure what our problem here is, but trust me, it's worth waiting for. I wanted to use it in Washington, of course. But you know what? My opinion is that they're not using this where the public can actually see it being used because if it's on the nightly news, people might start questioning this. You know, 
mom and pop that are watching, um, you know, Fox might see it on Fox. They might even run it on CNN and the Wall Street Journal. And then guess what? Then everybody knows about it. Then are we going to have people reporting um, out of, you know, everyday life that they feel they're being targeted by some imaginary ray from somewhere? And then what? And then, then they couldn't be taken for... Um, mental screenings, which is hap which is generally what happens to people. So, of course, nobody really wants to talk about it. So, uh, let me try and get this video again. Oh, right, they marketed a version called Silent Guardian. Okay, Briefs and several other DOD representatives had quite the heated demonstration at Quantico, Virginia, from the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate. This is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. I say again, this is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. Their new active denial system boasts a reach far beyond any other non-lethal system. Yeah, well, it's a versatile system, uh, and it has a, a range of uh, non-lethal capability that we can't even come close to with any of our fielded systems today that are in our military forces. About seven football fields, to give it some perspective. It can deter individuals on a military perimeter all the way up to a riotous crowd. All without permanent harm. It only penetrates uh, one sixty-fourth of an inch of your skin. Goes very shallow uh, into where your nerve receptors are, uh, and there's no uh, no permanent injury caused by it. Uh, very safe system. We built in some safety margins and uh, uh, training for the operators. They even let any of the guests volunteer to test out its effectiveness and safety, <laughs> including the assistant commandant of the Marine Corps. Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, and Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Most described it as feeling like a hot oven or grill being opened up. It is something that, once again, probably the safest system that, uh, that we've developed is, as far as the non-lethal capability. From Washington, I'm Sergeant Andrew Milner. All right, folks, I don't believe anything like this should exist, but with all the evils in the world, it does. Now, are you comfortable knowing that this exists? And can you honestly say that this machine is tweaked to go 1 64th of an inch into your body? What if they tweak that to go one inch into your body? Could they pinpoint a person's heart? Could somebody just drop over by being hit with a ray, a microwave, frequency ray? Not only is this possible, it's being done right now. Now, imagine that somebody could just put that in their pocket and walk around with it. Let's check this video out because this is worth watching too. Go over to their channel and watch it. I'm not making any money. I don't want to steal In a massive stuff. supermarket sweep style shopping spree, the federal government blew through $91 billion in just one. What would you rather have a police officer carrying? A handgun or a pain ray? I'm Anthony, this is D News, and Raytheon has created a handheld, non lethal pain ray. We've talked about Raytheon before, right? They build exoskeletons, autonomous turrets, really high end military stuff. I tend to think of them as Stark Industries before Tony Stark sobered up. Over the last decade, Raytheon's been tinkering with an energy weapon called Active Denial. It's a crowd dispersal system, basically, a gigantic ray gun mounted in a truck hundreds of yards away, blasts controlled microwaves into. All right, we've seen this in the other tests. I'm, I forgot what I was going to say. Let's just keep playing. The crowd, making them instantly unbearably hot. And their reflexes kick in and they make them move and then the pain is gone. An active denial unit was sent to Afghanistan in 2010, but it was recalled before it was ever used. The National Institute of Justice said it was because of this huge public outcry against it. People were worried. Smaller and more efficient, but just as powerful. The idea is more non-lethal weapons in the hands of law enforcement means a safer public and less escalation of violence in big, hostile situations. But how safe is a microwave gun, really? Uh, active denial uses millimeter waves, highly controlled radiation. Now, mind you, anyone, you or I or a fifth grader with some tools, can make a microwave gun at home. Look it up. 
punch into your YouTube search how to make a microwave gun. It's possible to do at your own house. Let alone Raytheon, um, the national, you know, big defense contractor, has the capabilities to make it, has made it, it's been sold, it's for sale, it's out there. They also have something called the Ravenclaw, which is a laptop size case, and in it is a machine that you can pinpoint any per spot on a person's body to irritate, cause pain, or Lord knows what to. And that is an actual machine. I'm not thinking this up like it's not some conspiracy theory that we wonder. We don't have to wonder. This is actual tech that is built and being used. Do we want everybody to have one of these? The sad fact is anybody can have one. It could be built in your own house. So you're going to tell me that law enforcement and other alphabet agencies are not using this? And better yet, who have they tested this stuff on? Does that make you wonder when you hear somebody say they're a targeted individual and things are being done to them, you know, invisibly? It doesn't sound so crazy now, does it? And that penetrates about 0.4 millimeters into the skin. And a few studies have shown that to a firearm, so why not use it? Well, what popped into your head when I said taser? Probably a bunch of YouTube videos of police abusing tasers. There are a ton of reports of them being used on children, the elderly, peaceful protesters. Non-lethal weapons have a tendency to be way overused. They're thought of as a step before firearms instead of an Every round of ammo fired, couldn't the device somehow report every time it's been used? I don't know. What do you guys think about a pain ray getting out there in circulation? Let me know down below and subscribe. For yeah, what do we think about a pain ray out there in circulation? This isn't an if, ladies and gentlemen. It's already out there. It's being used. Who is it being used on? When is it being used? And if so, why isn't it being used in these situations to quell these riots would have saved us how many months, months and months and millions and billions of dollars of damage and jobs and everything else for every time they have made a bullet and killed a human being when they have this at their hands. Now, please, I wish they didn't have any of this. I wish there were no bullets, guns, knives, none of that, no violence. But why wasn't this deployed in a situation where it could have saved everything? Everybody would have went home. They have frequencies that can make people poop their pants. It's called the brown, the brown tone. Look it up. They could have used a brown sound, would made every, every protester in the area poop their pants. Now, who is going to riot with poop in their pants? Okay, I'm just saying. What do you think?